Welcome <laughs> back, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a fun ass ride. I hope none of you can hear any reverb. We have installed firmware updates, yelled at each other, and drank bourbon. Yes. Fun, 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 fun. So welcome back to the Real Forno Show. Podcast is going to be a lot more simple. And we're we're excited to have conversations here. And we're gonna we're gonna just jump right into it. I'm gonna give everybody actually hold on. I'm gonna give everybody a couple minutes to get back in. Please do. Because yeah. Yes. Ta da. Now the question is, does anybody hear the reverb now or the echo or whatever you want to <clears> say? <throat> yeah, hey, it's fixed. <laughs> oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> gremlins in the airplane maintenance world we call those gremlins so uh, dave i think what it was is the last time we had issues i had a firmware update okay. and well i just updated the firmware during that little pause and i mean we lost about six sevenths of our audience but i hope they all come back and i'm very glad that you stayed patient with us it, it means a lot that that you don't hate me enough to go when we have audio issues and you're willing to wait it out. That, that means a ton. Um, give everybody a, a couple more minutes and I, I'm going to do a little promo. I am drinking high West double rye, single barrel. Sweet. Let me, uh, high rest, high West double rye, Dave, you should buy it. Um, it's standard under $30. <laughs> and there's not very few whiskeys down here under 30. Texas likes to take their share. Trust me. Okay. Well, if here I can usually get it for around 27. So depending on with Texas, you may pay a little bit more. I'm going to be real. It's really good. This is the single barrel. I paid 65 for it and it has been worth the money. Uh, but for like a daily drinker, the double rye is tremendous. High, high recommend. Even if you don't love rye, I know you like rye, I love but rye. it's, it's very good. Um, all right. Now, Where hold on. did hold yes. on. I want to answer uh, Moose Beard? A great handle there, Moose Beard. Technically, yes, it's not reverb. Reverb is a sound effect we can apply. But what we're talking about was slapback. Slapback is the audio term for it. And hopefully, you're not hearing it. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> All right, let's uh, let's dive in because we've been trying to talk about this for about 25 minutes, and I think it's time to start. There's 63 of you back. We had almost 140 in. Hopefully, everybody starts trickling back in, but we know how audio issues can impact the viewership mm -hmm. of a show. So let's have a real conversation here. And that is about Minnesota Vikings and trading up to get that quarterback of the future. Before we ended up going kablooey and trying to fix the audio, one thing we were talking about is the fact that the Vikings may not be able to actually make the trade. It takes two to tango. And it, it's a very difficult uh, proposition because you don't want to be negative. You don't want to look at the bad, but you have to look at every possible outcome and because you have to look at every possible outcome. We have to look at the bad. It, and it just kind of sucks. So what I did this weekend is I wrote a mock draft where the Vikings weren't able to trade up at all. And they kept 11 and 23 and they didn't get a quarterback. Why did I do this? It wasn't to make people mad. It was to explore the realistic possibility that they don't like Bonex. They don't like Michael Penix Jr. They don't like Spencer Rattler or Michael Pratt. And they don't get one of the top four quarterbacks. So what, what do they do? How do they try to maximize this draft? Well, they could trade back, try to recoup assets for next year and try to recoup like a couple day two picks. Well, I didn't do that. I just like, screw it. We're going to take two really talented players, at 11 and 23, and we're just going to try and build out the roster. So what I ended up doing was taking the two highest rated players on my board that were available at those spots. And they were player three and player four, Terry and Arnold and chop Robinson. I love those game, those guys' games. I think that they are tremendous football players and adding a potential wait, CB. Wait, 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 wait. What? You like Chop Robinson? Shut up, Dave. 
Um, <laughs> yes, uh, I'm probably going to be the highest in the industry on Mr. Chop Robinson. But hey, he's moving up. You should have, you should be higher, but that's a conversation for a different day. And for those who didn't know, Chop Robinson is a edge rusher from Penn State mm-hmm. that exhibits all sorts of traits that you would love to have on the Minnesota Vikings on the opposite side of our newest edge rushers to help. Yeah. And you get the lockdown corner, you get a potential edge one in Chop Robinson. And here, here's the thing about edge rushers. You have to have athleticism. All the top edge rushers have a relative athletic score of like 9.3 or higher. Chop Robinson's real, real good. So, um, okay, one, Dave, I, ha- I have to say this. There is a commenter who says, I missed the echo, rage against the <laughs> anal beads. What a fantastic handle. What a, what a handle. Uh, almost as good as my worthless opinion. Uh-huh. I, I think I think that well that, that one's the best. Um, so we're gonna we're we're gonna have the conversation of they take these two defenders and you just build the team and you try to get the quarterback next year. Well, the downside is quarterback class next year doesn't look as strong, but we can say that and then you can end up having a great quarterback class. You just you don't know until you know. Or you and can I think have that's a garbage quarterback class. Yeah, what is it, it the 21 class or the 22 class? There isn't yeah. a starter left, and there was like five taken in the first round. There's so much that we don't know. And it's the annoying thing is you think you know, but then you don't. So the this was the quarterback class that the Vikings wanted to target. They knew that going into 2023. And they wanted Anthony Richardson. They tried, but... <laughs> the Cardinals were, weren't were balking. There's another so, great one. Son of a beavers. I love it. I love it. Um, if the Unless Vikings can't do Willie it. Beavers, which was a great the, name for an offensive oh, lineman. All right. L- let's get back on topic here. If the Vikings can't get the quarterback, you just got to build up the roster. And Chop Robinson and Terry and Arnold would do that in droves. Makes you feel a lot more comfortable at the cornerback position. Edge rusher gets another weapon and Andrew Van Ginkle is a player that can end up doing a lot of different things. Um, they can, uh, he can drop back into coverage. He can play really well against the run and he's obviously a really good pass rusher and blitzer. So having a guy like chop can really modify things and do a lot of different things. Brian respectfully, I would hate Turner into Gene uh, considering where they rank on my board. But I understand. I understand the thought process. I do. Um, I just don't think DeGene's a good enough man corner to play in this defense. I don't. I ha- you haven't seen it, and he struggles playing with his back to the ball. And I don't think he has. He has really good athleticism, but I don't think he has man corner athleticism. And that, like, just with how he's an athlete, I don't think it translates. But that's a whole different thing. All well, right. And as, the whole as idea we, is we're going by your board, right? You're yes. the one that puts in all the hours of work watching film mm-hmm. and evaluating these players and a year's mm-hmm. worth of evaluating for that. And man, juice, thank you for that super chat before I enjoy that. Um, but you're the one that does it. So you're ranking and stacking them the way you view them, not the mm-hmm. way the consensus does. And that's why Terry and Arnold pops up ahead of DeGene and mm-hmm. Tyler's board and thinks he would be a better fit just to explain that so people know tyler puts in the work i see it every day he sends me notes every day dave got another one on the spreadsheet dave got another one and he's putting at least four hours watching at least four games minimum per each player just to let you all know actually it's a minimum of three but no there, there's kind of a, a scouts rule of thumb where you can kind of get a sense of a player in five plays. Um, I've noticed that with a few guys be like, okay, this guy's really, really good within five plays and a couple be like, I don't get him. And then you have to get more context. And there's been one or two where it's like, yeah, this guy's bad. So it, it's like, you still need to kind of figure out some minute details, 
but it's like uh like tasting a steak you're you're gonna know within that first bite or two like yeah that's good and then the next few bites you're gonna be like okay what seasonings are in it? You can try and break that down. It's kind of the same thing with scouting film. But I do want to answer the that question um, that Man Juice had, which is another great handle. Um, anytime you guys super chat and ask a question, we will answer it on the air. We said that last show, and we're going to do that moving forward. Uh, it's if you're willing to give us uh, a little bit of cash because we are good at our jobs, we are going to reward you by answering your questions. Within reason, I'm not going to tell you some some things about my personal life, um, but we'll answer almost anything. So uh, thoughts on the private workout for JJ, and we can kind of use this to transition into talking about some trade-ups because, look, there's a real chance the Vikings can't get a quarterback, but that that like you can kind of read more about that in, uh, in that mock draft that I wrote for Vikings Wire. Uh, the private workout, I think they're going to put all these guys for private workouts. So to me, it's a non-story. I think it's a good headline grabber, a good, hey, some people are like, oh, they're putting him through a private workout. They're going to put all these quarterbacks through a private workout. To me, it's not special. And I don't mean that as insulting. They're just doing their due diligence. And because they're doing their due diligence, it's just a, a cost of doing business. So I don't really see it as anything else. But it's a good thing. It's a very good thing. Um, all right. So... Let's talk about some trade ups. Um, look, before we do that, let's let's address the tampering thing. I don't think that the Vikings will be benefiting from this tampering thing. I think the Falcons will be stripped of something. Uh, I I don't think it's within the NFL rules that the Vikings get anything. I don't. I now, think in the past, it's happened where the tampering team gets stripped of draft picks and yep. fined financially mm -hmm. but i don't think the so, team that got tampered from got anything it there's the precedent is usually a third round pick and the patriots they had a sorry the the dolphins they had a, a scheme concocted from owner steven ross who was directly talking with both sean payton and tom brady they got stripped of a first but that was some pretty egregious stuff the 49ers have been stripped. The Chiefs got stripped of a third round pick. I think the 49ers did too, for directly talking to Jeremy Macklin when they weren't supposed to. Obviously, Reed just went over to Kansas City, had coached Macklin for a few years, drafted him. Uh, they got stripped of a third. So the one thing that gives me pause is if the Vikings and Falcons can work out a deal. Because last year, the Cardinals technically tampered with Jonathan Gannon. They worked out a trade. It was a third round swap. The Eagles went up like 28 spots. And in exchange, the, the um, Cardinals got a fifth round pick this year. So it was, a, it was a decently lopsided trade for the Eagles. They went up those uh, 28 spots or however many. And it was a benefit for them. The only thing I can think of is if they settle it kind of out of court and they do something like that. I don't think it's going to be an 11 8 swap. Would it be fair? Maybe. I don't know. I, 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 I don't really have a sense of whether it'd be fair to give the Vikings three picks higher in round one. Now, it would certainly make things better for the Vikings. It would make things a lot easier to trade up because the team, oh, I can just drop from three or four to eight. It's a lot better than 11. I can get a better player theoretically. I, but I, I wouldn't expect it to happen. But the gray says San Francisco and Chicago swapped first rounders in 2008 because of tampering. Hey, gray. I hope you're right. And I hope the NFL. No, that like is that. not. I, in 2008. Really? Mm. I'd have to look that up, but I don't remember. Lord knows I was around then. I was in Scott Air Force Base, Illinois. I was getting ready to retire. I was working with Ted Glover. No. So, less. okay. It, they for, the Niners had to forfeit a fifth, and they swapped picks with the Bears in the third. So it, it was not a first-round swap. And I, I think the fact there's a third-round swap it, it like is going to 
is going to tell you that that's kind of the the range we're talking about. We're not talking about first round picks over Lance Briggs. Yep. It was over Lance Briggs. Okay. Let's talk about some trade ups. We've had this conversation before and I wrote a new article, which is essentially reformatted from my first one. But the conversation is has shifted because of the 28th overall pick. Or sorry, the 23rd overall pick. It changes the conversation. Now, it's it's a different conversation because um a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush. I think that's the saying. Uh current asset is better than a future asset. And that's how NFL teams believe because it's more tangible. And it's more concrete. I know I'm getting the 23rd overall pick. I don't know what pick the Vikings would be sending next year. I also don't know how actually good the NFL draft class would be next year. All of these things matter and are impactful in the conversation. So what I did was I took a look at what the Rich Hill trade chart says would be an identically even trade. Three points is mute. It, it, it doesn't matter. So if the Vikings were to trade up to five, here's what the rich Hill trade chart would say. The Vikings send 11, 23 and one Oh eight, and they get back picks five and 37. There is no chance in hell that the chargers end up making that trade. They're not giving you the second. They're just not because there's things called the quarterback tax and just trading up from 11 to five is significantly different from the trading up to like 31 to 25. So remember the Vikings, I think got a fourth round pick to move down those six spots in the Jeff Gladney, Justin Jefferson draft. So that that's something you have to factor in. I think 11 and 23 for five is going to be the trade. The Chargers may throw in something like one Oh five, which is 32 points, which would bring it a lot closer for the Vikings. It would be 500 to 600 and, and three. Like the Vikings are still giving up a significant amount, but you're also going to get the quarterback and you have to pay a tax. You have to pay a quarterback tax. Teams know this. They take advantage of you and other NFL teams let themselves be taken advantage of. Why? They're getting the future of the franchise. If it works, it does not matter what you pay. And I think that needs to be shouted from the rooftops. Nothing matters. If you hit, there is not a soul that is talking about the third and first round picks that the Kansas city chiefs gave to the Buffalo bills. So they could go get Patrick Mahomes. Nobody cares. The bills gave up a franchise left tackle two second round picks to go from 22 to seven to get Josh Allen. Nobody cares why it hits. The reason why people talk about the San Francisco 49ers giving up three total or two first and a third to move up from 12 to three is because Lance didn't hit. If Lance hit, nobody cares. Not a soul cares. It just doesn't exist. Because if you hit, that is all that matters. Now, what drives up the price if we're trading up? You're talking trading up to five. If we want to go to four or three or two, right? Each of those teams mm-hmm. that are, if they're entertaining a trade, to get more picks. And there's reasons for all of them to do that, including Chicago at number one. If they're willing to trade down to gather more picks, there are certain QB needy teams they are they know might want to get in on the bidding war. The Vikings will be part of all of those discussions because they know the Vikings are coming up. But what they may do, say Arizona wants to trade down, They may say, hey, I got the Giants on the line. They're offering this. Are you going to beat this? And you're going to start a bidding war. And that's where the cost goes up just a bit so that you can beat said Giants. And Giants are my biggest worry out of who might come up. But there are other teams that could as well. That's why... It may cost more than the Rich Hill chart suggests. And some people call that the quarterback tax. And very well could be. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, the other picks because then we're going to have the conversation kind of uh, centered around 
why this trade hasn't happened yet because I think there's a lot of interesting talking points there. So if the Vikings want to get up to four, they would need, uh, the Rich Hill trade chart said, the fair move is 11, 23, and uh, for four, 66, and 104. So the Vikings technically get more picks than what they would be giving up. It'd be 603 points to 602. Here's the flaw in that logic. That's not happening. It's the same flaw that we talked about with trading up to five. The move would probably be 11, 23, and 129 for pick four. Now, do you want to give up that fourth round pick? No, but you may have to do that. And if it hits, it doesn't matter. Who cares? A fourth round pick doesn't mean anything if you end up hitting on the quarterback. Third overall, Rich Hill Trade Chart says picks 11 and 23 for picks 368 and 137 is an even swap at 603 points. We know it's not going to happen. A likely move is 11, 23 and a first round pick next year. And you get picks three and one Oh three. So you get a fourth round pick back, giving you three fourth round picks, probably package two of those up to move up in the middle of the third round, try and get a guy who can be a contributor early. Maybe it's somebody that I love like a Malachi Corley fingers crossed or an but offensive lineman that this is kind of the price you have to pay to get a quarterback. Two is going to be even worse. Um, 11, 23, a first round pick next year for picks two and 139. 139 being top of the fifth round. Um, the Vikings would probably have to send that and possibly a second round pick in 26 to the commanders for just pick two. Quarterback tax is real. The commanders in 2012 famously paid um, pick six and their next two first round picks along with a second round pick to go up to number two. And that is how the Rams ended up building that elite defensive front. Michael Brockers, Aaron Donald, like that defensive front was real, real, real good for a long time. So those things matter and those things are impactful. And you have to understand that you're going to pay a tax. You're going to pay extra. So all these trade uh, theoreticals, you have to take them into context and you have to understand, oh, that's way too much to pay. Well, that's the price. Now, the one thing the Vikings may have is other teams may not be able to bid as high as them. And they may just be like, you know, what? we're good. We're just going to stay. And then the Vikings may be able to trade less for the pick than they would have been able to otherwise, because teams just may not want to try and bid against them. Thank you. Thank you for becoming a member, Moosebeard. We greatly appreciate you. And this summer, we're going to do some fun members-only stuff because we're going to have a lot more free time. <laughs> and when you have these conversations, there's so many factors. And trades can look lopsided one year, but they may not be lopsided another. Well, why? The talent in the draft and other teams that also want to jump up and make that move because if you're bidding against yourself, unless you're just a dumbass, you're going to pay a lot less than if you were bidding against three other people, because I can just be like, like an auctioneer. If the starting bid is 500 bucks and you just say, yeah, I'll pay 500 bucks and nobody else bids against you. You're getting that item for 500 bucks, but you got three or four other guys. You may pay 1500 for it. And that's where some of these things matter. And you have to take them into consideration. One thing as well is you have to take into consideration, well, why haven't the Vikings made the move yet? Well, there's a lot of different factors. Theoretically, the idea has been that the Vikings should have just made a double trade, where if you remember, the Dolphins traded back with, with the San Francisco 49ers, got all those picks, and then they traded up within 15 minutes with the Philadelphia Eagles to go and get pick six because they wanted Jalen Waddle. And that context is kind of like, well, why didn't the Vikings do that? It would make a lot of sense for the Vikings to do that. They didn't. And there's so many different reasons why they might not have. And I, I don't really have a great answer for it. I think that they have maybe a handshake agreement with a couple of teams or at least one where, 
hey, if this guy's here, we're going to pull the trigger. And I'm guessing, and you'll hear speculation about this for is weeks. And this is, the, this is the absolutely most annoying thing about having this trade happen so far away from the draft is all the annoying speculation and people claiming that they know um, the like the the fake insiders on Twitter saying, oh, the Vikings plan is this if this happens. They don't know. They don't. And if they're telling you that they do, don't listen to them. I don't know for sure. I can speculate. I can try and make an educated guess based on things that are coming out of the building that we hear publicly. But I don't know for sure. Nobody knows except like the super insiders. They're only going to tell you certain things. So just remember that. Don't and listen they to may people. Not know for sure. Heck, the team may not know for sure. Well, that, that's the thing. You have to know who's saying it. It's like politics. You have to know who's saying it and why they're saying it. So don't listen to the people that claim that they have sources. You know who those people are. Yeah, you know that, that that they have a code that they live by. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them at all. So with that being said, my guess is they have a handshake agreement with the Chargers. If one of those quarterbacks is here, we're making the trade. And if the quarterback is not there, if the Cardinals decide, hey, we're not taking Marvin Harrison Jr., we're just going to trade, then the Vikings don't make that deal, and they are um, left at the altar. Now, maybe they like Michael Penix Jr., and they just take him at 23, or they take him at 11 and take another guy at 23. Those are all possibilities. We genuinely don't know. And we, nobody knows for sure because like, I don't even think Quasi Dolfo Mensa and Kevin O'Connell ha have fully set in on this is our guy completely. I think they're, they're going to go to these pro days. They're going to do those private workouts. They're going to have these conversations and they're going to formulate the plan. And once they formulate the plan, I believe in them to execute it. I just pray to God that plan is not Bo Nix. If it's Bo Nicks, I will cry. <laughs> and if you are at the Score North Live draft show, it is not going to be a fun time for me. It is going to be a brutal. But these are the things that you have to understand. You have to have these conversations. You have to have things set in stone. Now, remember, the Lions trade, and no matter how much you liked or disliked it from the 2022 draft, the Vikings had negotiated that trade with the Lions days prior, weeks prior. Where, hey, if this guy is here, we want to pull the trigger. This is the price. So that's kind of what you're having the conversation about. And I don't know what's going to end up happening on draft day. I hope, I hope, 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 hope that quarterback ends up being Drake May. I think Drake May could be the franchise changer for this team that we've been begging for, for years and years and years. I am 34 years old. I started watching Vikings football coherently in 1994 when my favorite football player, Warren Moon, was the quarterback. My first real football memory was John Elway driving down and beating us 21-17 in the Metrodome on a pass that was tipped multiple times by Orlando Thomas. And Ed McCaffrey caught it for a touchdown. There has never been a true point outside of maybe a couple years with Dante Culpepper, because I'm a huge Culpepper guy. When I get some money, those I'm getting a Culpepper jersey and a Percy Harvin jersey framed, and I'm putting them somewhere. I haven't figured that part out yet. <laughs> I felt Culpepper was a franchise guy, and things crumbled for a lot of different reasons. I never really felt that way about Kirk Cousins. I know some people did, and I understand. I never did because it never felt like we were in this position outside of a couple games into 2018 that the Vikings were going to end up like being like a real Super Bowl contender with him. It felt that way a little early, and then that soured real fast. But I want a franchise guy. I want to be able to look at the quarterback position and feel good about it, to feel comfortable with who's throwing the football to feel comfortable that if things go wrong, Dave, we're going to be able to make a run. I haven't felt that way in years. And the fact that we haven't felt that way in years, like Dave, you probably haven't felt it since Fran Tarkenton. 
Like, <laughs> hey, now, I, I do remember watching Fran as a kid, and uh, somebody said, uh, M. Sullivan said he's 55. M. Sullivan, I'm 60. That I remember watching Fran run around as a kid. I got, absolutely loved it. I was alive and watched all four of the Super Bowls. I don't remember all four of them, but I remember being watching them because I was I lived in Minnesota during part of that time. That's where I got my debut uh, into Vikings fandom. It's we have we've had some great quarterbacks, some really good ones. Where you want to talk Kramer? Where you want to talk Cunningham, Moon, Favre? Right, the Rena guys, mm-hmm. right? And we almost had. Uh, uh, what's his name from Miami there at the end? Dan Marino. Dan Marino. But we haven't had that true franchise guy. Dante was going to be. Dante had a good start. Mm-hmm. Dante's knee blew up. We felt Teddy Bridgewater may be. And Teddy Bridgewater was building and getting better and better. And his knee exploded. We have not had anyone. And I know people suffer from ponder PTSD right? The reach. And everybody's worried that we're going to reach. Well, you got to take a shot no matter what. And it's either going to work out or some people are going to get fired. One of the way, it's, it's a home run or it fails and people get fired. There are no other options, but you've got to try because if you don't try, we sit here mired in mediocrity, right? Hey, we can make the playoffs. It's December. All we got to do is win these two games or have this team lose. Yes, I am so tired of that. Uh, Fort Matty Man 69, hey, my salute, brother. Um, my first game was at the old Met in 69. There's uh, Joe Cap. Yeah, you want to talk about somebody like that? Yes, we need somebody like that. And it takes... A shot, that's all I'm asking. Take a shot to get that guy. No quarterback's been drafted in the top 10 by the Minnesota Vikings in their history. The entire history. Mm -hmm. And if they go up now and get it, one that gives them a higher percentage of it actually happening, of getting that guy, but Mm -hmm. it gives us all hope, the new... We're, we're already moving on to the new. Kirk Cousins is off in Atlanta. He's going to work his magic down there. Good for him. I hope he succeeds in the way he normally does. That is fine for Atlanta Falcons fans. Yeah. We're Vikings fans. Let's start this new era in Minnesota with something we've missed, honestly, since Rand Tarkington, and go from there. That, to me gives me more excitement and the possibility I might see a Super Bowl before I die Mm -hmm. than anything else. Now, people talk about trading up early, right? Why don't we do it before the draft? If they do it before the draft, it's got to be in the top four, one of those positions, to guarantee Mm -hmm. them getting one of the top four quarterbacks. If it's not, and you trade to five, you have the possibility of losing out. And you don't want to be sitting there at five with all top four quarterbacks gone. And your choice is Penix, right, at five, which would be way overdrafted. Or your favorite player that you have so much love for, Bo Nix. And that is just crazy to me that you would do that. Mm-hmm. So I would expect a draft day trade if if indeed, which I think is the plan, that they do plan to move up, or if they do it prior to that, it's securing one of those top four spots, period. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be uh, either draft day or they go to three. I don't think the Cardinals are going to go uh, from four on draft day. I think the way the Cardinals end up trading out is if on draft day, the Patriots stay and take Marvin Harrison Jr., that's the only way I think the Cardinals will trade out because at that point, well, they don't have Marvin Harrison Jr. They may not like Malik Neighbors and Romo Dunze in the same way as they like Marvin Harrison Jr. And it, you know what? It could be reverse. It could be they like one of those guys and if those guys go higher. If the guy that they want isn't there, they may be willing to trade back and just collect the haul. 
and collect assets because they need to find a way to maximize their assets. There's going to be a lot of discussion on this and it's going to be annoying. It's going to be nauseating, which is why we're talking about it now. And if things start being rumored and talked about, we'll address them. But Mm -hmm. let's just be real here. Digit says we don't need Joe Cap. Joe Cap in 69 got us to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I'll take a quarter that gets us to the quarterback that gets us to the Super Bowl. Let's be real here. The Vikings will do something. We'll find out what it is in time. Until then, we're going to have a lot of conversations. And let me tell you, at some point, we're going to have the discussion where I'm going to put these quarterbacks against each other and we're going to break them down in depth. And we're and if you want, there's a lot of school search episodes on the site and on the podcast feed that you can just search and you can find them on the YouTube page. It's all on a playlist and you can find them nice and easy. McCarthy, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Michael Penix Jr., Caleb Williams, Bo Nix, Spencer Rattler, Michael Pratt. You can find them on all of those guys and you can see why I like them and why I don't. Before you, we Curtis, go for the super um, chat. T-Y. Let's, answer, let's answer the super chat question. Um, he says, let's hope the new QB is less polarized than Kirk Cousins. I'm excited for the future. Do you see any more free agent signings? Do they do, do they go all in next year? I think they're going to be smart about the free agent signings. To my knowledge, at least my last check, they have not actually gotten to the contract details for Jonathan Gennard, Jonathan Bullard, Aaron Jones, and Andrew Van Ginkel onto over the cap. So right now the Vikings are still sitting at like 16.8 million. They also have not entered the restructure for Harrison Smith to my knowledge. So there's a lot of change that could be coming to that space. And the Vikings could still restructure some contracts, TJ Hawkinson, Brian O'Neill. So there's cap space that they can create. We'll see how that ends up manifesting and looking like the Vikings could also restructure Harrison Smith and uh, take that $9 million salary and put it in a signing bonus. If they want, I would probably say, don't do that because he's probably not going to be here next year. I know people don't want to hear it, but Look, he's getting older. So we'll find out if they want to make more signings. I'm guessing it would probably be like lower tier guys, guys for the minimum, maybe some competition at left guard. I think Dalton Reisner is not coming back. That's my lean on it. If he was coming back, I think there would have been a deal uh, talked about by now. But my take is they don't think he's good enough for the money that he would command. And I think there is some rationale to that. I think that's not 100% unfair. It's, look, he was fine last year. I didn't think he was great. So we'll, we'll kind of see. Um, Udo to New Orleans. Interesting. I hope he gets a chance to really play. He's a, he's a good football player. Uh, really stinks that he tore that quad tendon last year. Um, with that being said, if Udo gets uh, more than $3 million, the Vikings could end up with another compensatory pick. <laughs> so with that being said, that's going to be the show. Thank you guys so much for staying patient tonight. Mm-hmm. We, we did peak it. over, th- we peaked over 300 viewers, which was awesome. And we greatly appreciate all of you. Uh, don't forget there was, we had one gentleman, uh, the moose guy. I can't remember his actual handle. He signed up to be a member. We haven't done a ton of members only content, but it's a great way to support us on a consistent monthly basis. And we're going to be doing some members only stuff when it gets slow this summer. And it's going to be a lot of fun until we come back for sure on Wednesday night with the real Forno show. We're going to try and do some skull searches, but skull searches are going to be a little di- difficult. We don't have a second round pick and we're pretty much drafting a quarterback. So Uh, We're not quite sure how we're going to approach those here moving forward, but eh, we may just say screw it and talk about some of the top guys so you guys have all the information. That being said, thank you for joining. I'm Tyler. He's Dave. Did you know that today is Fans First Sports Network's first year birthday? We partnered with them a year ago. Now, we've... Tyler and I formed Vikings First and Skull along with Darren. Prior to that, we celebrated that last week. But we joined Fans First Sports Network. 
And what it is is what it sounds like. You have every team that got fired from uh, SB Nation via Vox, all the majority of them, 90% of them came over to Fans First Sports so that we could bring you the talk and love for the team that you all share. And we just wanted to wish the big guys at Fans First a happy birthday. We got in ground on the ground level as the Vikings arm of that network, and we appreciate it and wish them all the very happiest of birthday and hopefully they're celebrating along with us like we did last week on the one-year anniversary. And that's where you can find your podcast. Just type in Vikings First and Skull on your favorite podcast aggregator, and we're there. With that being said, I'm Tyler. He's Dave. Skull Vikings, everyone. Skull Vikings! Like subscribe and ring the bell to get notifications it helps us grow this community that we all love our minnesota vikings and on behalf of tyler fornis and myself dave stefano thank you so dearly for watching the real forno show skull everyone <laughs>